Be gone. Hello everybody, thanks for joining in today. I want to do a quick side-by-side -side comparison of my old trailer versus my new one. And I'll start off with Old Faithful here. My uh, first trailer was a 2017 30K rated Texas Pride Gooseneck. It is 20 foot plus five. It's got 20 foot of fixed decking and five foot of dovetail. Uh, actually stretches out with my extensions to 26 feet of usable deck space. This has been a pretty good trailer. No real complaints about this thing other than it's really heavy. And uh, yeah, but there's there's always room for improvements. This is my new trailer, uh, 2020 Diamond C. This thing is actually a 26K rated, 30 foot worth of deck. The first 18 feet of it is uh, fixed. And then the last 12 is hydraulic dovetail. And that is just hydraulic luxury right there. Big game changer having that. And man, I just wish I would have had that sooner. But we'll start back in the day. Why I started YouTube channel and all that stuff. The whole reason, the whole premise behind it was I had a lot of questions about buying a trailer. There was a big hole in the YouTube world. Where stuff like this videos like what I'm trying to make right now hopefully this will fill that gap a little bit better but for the first time buyer when he's going out looking at a trailer uh, I'm gonna try and shed a little bit of light for you guys and uh, answer some of the questions I might have had back then so first thing buying anything first thing that always stands out is the price now Texas Pride they do a lot of advertising they advertise uh, factory direct to you they have a very very competitive price I will say they're the cheapest on the market and I don't know if that's really a bad thing their trailer is very stout the only issues I've ever had with this is a couple wheel seals actually all four wheel seals went out on the hubs so I switched all the hubs over to grease and haven't had any issues since and when one break fell apart but Texas Pride took care of me on warranty right off the bat uh, no questions asked so their customer support was great and got this new trailer though main reason for getting this new trailer despite you know just the visualness of it which one do you think would weigh more actually the old one does because you actually have two options when it comes to strength you have strength in the mass or you have strength in design you can hear it Sounds quite a bit thinner, and it is, but you just look at the design of the Diamond Seas engineered gooseneck here. All one piece. Got a bigger spread. It's got a 12 and a half inch top to bottom versus the 12 inch over here. Look how many pieces this has. I beam, fish plate, under fish plate, I beam. Right angle I-beam, some extra stuff in the middle, don't really need that. I-beam down. This one has 14 inch I-beam underneath versus, well, and it even has this here too. That's to help it from flexing, doing a negative flex. But then you come over to the new trailer, it has, I believe it's 16 inch worth of I-beam, 4 inches wide. And it is pre-arched. The Fleet Neck Engineered Beam whole trailer is designed with innovation in mind. It is pre-arched upwards. And even putting the 080 on this, which is about 20,000 pound excavator, slightly forward, it did not have enough to flatten this trailer out. When I put the 080 on this heavy steel bulk iron trailer, it sags it down. It gives it a negative angle. Now, I want to make one thing clear before I go too far. Uh, neither one of the companies of these trailers I'm showing right now paid to have me say one's better than the other. Neither one. I bought both these trailers with my own money, and this is my honest opinion on each of them. So, a couple more things. When it's coming to, you know, this trailer costs half of what this trailer does, and I'll show you why. Simple design right here. Just got a big old piece of channel, throw across. You got support right down at the bottom of the gooseneck. It's got a couple pieces up here. Got a big piece up there. There's just a lot of iron just used all over the place. Versus coming over here, 
one big piece and they got it curved over that gives even more strength this piece goes down underneath it's still one piece and it ties right into the lower frame that right there yeah that's a lot more attention to detail a lot more effort but that's what you're paying for right there another the couple simple things is Look at the size of this toolbox. You guys have been following the channel for very long. You know I've been throwing a fit about this toolbox being so tiny. Can't fit much in that thing. But then you come over to this one. And yeah. This thing's bigger than a mini fridge. Got toolbox and stuff in there. I don't want to throw the binders in this one anyway. You know, ironically. Because it's got the uh, valve, valve body thing for the hydraulic jacks. But I got chain rack. To throw all my binders up there and i did get a toolbox to go up on the top <clears throat> relatively speaking if you didn't get the trailer with the hydraulic jacks if you just got a simple one with uh, i did upgrade to oak deck and the hutch suspension this is another big key ingredient right here and you know that's not too much more of an option you have that very sturdy 48 inch spread to come over to here look at that there is not much going on there for side strength at all uh, yeah that always worries me this one does not have near the spread that the new one has you can just see right there you know in some situations the spread can kind of limit you I wouldn't want to go any more than this but uh, it's not that terrible if you guys saw from the drone footage these trailers are stacked about the same as you can get the front axle they're about even as you can get. Headache racks or even Stevens. So the characteristics of this thing backing up is a little bit different than the old one. But I'm something I have to get used to. Um, another thing, like I was trying to get to, my point there is if you bought the Diamond C trailer without the upgraded disc brakes and without the upgraded uh, hutch suspension, it's not too much more expensive than this Texas Pride. You know, so if you're trying to save a couple bucks, do a little bit more research, and you might be able to just upgrade to virtually the same thing with a little bit more thought involved. <clears throat> One simple thing I want to note, I didn't think too much of it when I saw it on Arthur's trailer, is the steps fold down. That's cool. Those are very nice because they actually stick out farther than what these ones over here do and makes it easier getting up on the trailer but since they stick out you don't want to run them onto anything so pull them up out of the way easy access handles the simple stuff actually means a lot this one just uh i don't know but i like this trailer i'm still going to use this trailer but there are just some improvements i wish i would have uh, foreseen and spent the extra money back in the day but it's nice to have a backup trailer uh both of them have 17.5 tires and wheels and this one does have the 12k axles which isn't going to limit what i'm after because uh the other trailer there's no such thing as overkill but it might have been more than i really needed and i have a lot more confidence in this setup to be honest with you looking at this one the ride height is a lot higher so when you got a regular pickup bed i know you can get extensions for those but your standard option this is what it's riding at this is pretty nice, a lot more comfort because you're not worried about running over your bed rail in a tight spot. But it does have its limitations that I'm not too stoked on. Uh, I'm on level 4 with this right now. That's, you know, I don't think it's going to have any issue, but it just kind of, it looks like there could be a lot of stress. You see how much more of that is sticking out versus this low rider over here. It's only on level 2. Okay, so here's the few things that really separate these two trailers. Uh, one, brakes, two, suspension, three, weight, four, hydraulic dovetail, oh, and hydraulic jacks, uh, maybe I'll count that one as five, and I even had the upgraded oak decking on the new trailer, something that's going to be a little bit more durable, and one other key thing, you can order a winch plate, put a toolbox on it, it's a very cheap option. As far as jumping over to this one, some young punk decided to weld one in there. Gets the job done. Still kind of sucks. It's not a very good spot. Hard to get to. Not strong. Even though I double reinforced it. 
I had to add a toolbox. I welded some stuff in for that. Got this big thing in the way. That's what happened when it, in shipping, another trailer wore on it. Another thing, paint. I've never really been one to say paint, you know, one, one brand is better than the next, but look at this here. Three years of use, that's not new. That's been there since like right in the get-go. The first couple chains I threw on there, it started chipping it. Chipping it all over the place. Use this one for only one week. I know, only one week. But I throw the chains down, throw the binders down, just the same. Right there. Can't even tell. The only spot that it wore down, you can actually see how thick this paint is. Excavator blade right here. Nice and tough paint. I never really considered, you know, I was like, well, paint's paint. I'm going to be throwing chains around it. If it gets destroyed, it gets destroyed. What are we going to do about it? Significantly tougher paint on this trailer. Big fan of that. Go down the rail, bunch of stake pockets. Go down this rail, bunch of stake pockets. Oh, then they got this little sucker. Those things are actually very nice. I didn't really consider that those would be uh, another game changer. Makes life a little bit easier for chaining down. You get a step in the middle, one of those things you never think about, and then once you got it, you're like, dang, I really enjoy that. So you guys can see where your money went as far as, I mean, obviously it does have significant upgrades versus a stock, you know, bottom line standard. But it is so much more worth it. By the time you're said and done, you're going to be comfortable it saves me so much more time having these ramps, having these jacks. It makes me want to take the trailer off rather than just, oh, we'll deal with it later type of a thing. There's just so much more into this trailer that uh, I always question spending this kind of money on a trailer versus just getting one that would work. But probably time saved, fuel mileage, more payload that I can actually haul on this thing with the weight saved. I'll get these things officially weighed out on a, on a cat scale, but... Um, Talking to the manufacturers of each, I have a pretty good idea of what they weigh. About 7,500, uh, 85 to about 9,000 on the little guy. Uh, I do have the Mega Ramps added stuff to it, and uh, she's not really light. I can tell a difference just towing uh, empty with these two trailers. Even towing loaded, I can tell that I got a little bit more uh, range in my, you know, power. But pretty much... There's so much similarities between these two trailers, but then there's so much stuff that is different. It is kind of unbelievable where your money actually goes. You see these two things in person and you go, this makes a lot more sense. So do your guys' research. Uh, don't take my word for 100% on it. Oh, and one other thing, they are both low pro trailers. That means they are pierced beam. The, um, they cut into the I-beam down here and run the bar through for the deck to sit on. You can see how the I-beam sticks up there. And it sticks up here. I measured both of them from the middle of the rear axle, 34 inches on each. They are the same exact deck height. Same exact tires and wheels, except for different axles. I'm not going to buy anything expensive unless I saw one in person and felt it out, talked to an owner of it, or um, <clears throat> actually got to demo one, like a tractor or something. The trailer's not really much different. These things are expensive, so make sure you do your research and get something you're going to be happy with. Don't take my word for it, but hopefully it helps you, guide you in the right direction a little bit closer. But uh, you can go cheap, or you can go something that's going to be a great investment long term, and you can be very happy with the whole run. Hopefully, anyway. And customer support from Diamond C is, uh, I've had, you know, a couple little minor issues, but very easy to resolve, and they jumped on it quick. They didn't want uh, any issues uh, being long term. But... Let's end it here, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and found some useful information in it. I've been out here for way too long rambling, trying to say this stuff correctly so that I'm not coming across like a tool or spreading bad, terrible rumors. Again, neither one of these companies paid me to say this. I just wanted to share my information. Uh, I would probably buy either of them again for different circumstances. Budget allows what the budget allows. If you can only afford cheap, it might be enough to get you in the game. Uh, but if you can hold off or figure out a way to get something um, of a little bit more class, a little bit more quality, uh, in my opinion, I think that's going to hold you a little bit better in the end. But anyway, guys, see you on the next one.
feel free to share this video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, comment what trailer brand you guys are running personally right now. Uh, and what style trailer. If you're a dump trailer kind of an outfit, just a regular uh, flatbed trailer, or if you're hauling gooseneck, or if you're hauling over the road big rig stuff or cattle hauler, whatever it is, let me know in the comments below. But we'll see you guys in the next one though. Later.